Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Um, this is the latest I've been, so clearly that I need to make up some uh, ground um, on Friday for uh, being so late. I'm going to have to be extremely early Friday to compensate, of course, because um, that is just how things go over here. I'm going to do something really quickly to solve all of this nonsense going on right here with the glare. Well, that's glare, but like overexposure, I should say. I'm going to start using like real terms. Uh, oh, I'm going to start. I'm going to try. And you know what? I'm going to get the mic going because, you know, why Why wouldn't I have the mic ready to go so that you can hear me? So, yeah. Hey, Greg, what's going on? Uh, sorry I'm late. Let me get this exposure kind of sorted out. Oh, you know what? Of course, now that I've done that, I have ruined the... There we go. All right. All right, perfect. That's good. Now actually kind of worked out odd, oddly enough. So yeah, um, hope everyone's doing okay. Um, and everyone's still safe and doing the best that they can in the circumstances. I'm gonna pour myself some uh, fancy whiskey today. Well, fancy, nicer whiskey, nicer whiskey. Older whiskey, um, 16 year Lagavulin, because why not? It's a beautiful day outside in Toronto. It's about, uh, I don't even know, I think it's about 10 degrees. Uh, let's see, uh, 11 degrees uh, in Canadian units. And that's probably somewhere in the 50s, I think, low 50s, mid 50s in Freedom units. Uh, Jason, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I hope you blamed it on me and just didn't take the brunt of um, of the blame. Um, even though we weren't pressuring you whatsoever to drink as much as you did. So, um, <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's nice to be kind of put in your place every now and then um, by the missus. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so what's going on, uh, in life besides the nice weather, I went for a nice drive today. Well, a nice walk and drive. Uh, I had to go to Lowe's, pick up some stuff. Also got a chance to see some very old, uh, coworkers of mine from when I was working at Lowe's and, um, you know, got to kind of quickly catch up and make sure everyone was doing okay. Um, I picked up some wall brackets that, so that I can finally, um, finish this area here off for the new setup and um uh yeah and then uh, went to my parents place saw them really quickly and then went to uh, an uncle's place picked up um some stuff there and now i'm here and that's what uh, i was late because of traffic and considering that there shouldn't be as much people, as many people on the road. There's still traffic in Toronto somehow. So um, that's always fun. And Jason apparently took the brunt. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I've been called many things, a, a bad influence. I have not before, so I'll take it. Um, I'll take being a bad influence for once in my life. Uh, cheers to bad influences. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So I actually recently got um, the Lagavulin 11, the Nick Offerman edition. So now I have um, the 9 Game of Thrones, the 12 year, the 11 year, and the 16 year. So I think I'm going to do a... Now I did this already once. I did a log of and blind blind flight um, with the eight 
8, 9, 12, and 16, and a Distillers Edition. Um, and so I think I might do that again, but without the 8, because I don't have an 8, but include the 11 year, which should make things harder. Because you have 10, 11, 12, 16. So, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's all, these are all ideas. Now, let's just see if I can actually uh, put any of these into action. There's so many ideas already. No, what's well, so many ideas? There's one, two. Three ideas here now. So let's do another. Let's add another Lagavulin blind flight that I'll never get around to, but I will eventually. It's uh, it's it's, it's going to be with the weather. If the weather continues to get better, like it was today, there'll probably be um less opportunity for me to be doing stuff like this. Um, not stuff like this, like the live streams will probably still be going on, but like the produce stuff, cause I've been promising to do produce content for a while now. So we'll see if I can actually get around to doing stuff like that. I've been so preoccupied playing, um, Majora's Mask, um, Super Mario 64, Halo, the Halo franchise on Legendary. I'm on Halo 4 now. Um, and I recently dug up my um, old 3DS uh, that has the um, re the 3D uh, Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time cartridge in it still. So I think I think I might actually start playing that again. I don't know. I got so many old old nostalgic video games going on right now that I don't know. I have to be I have to be really kind of arm twisted to to. Sit, record, edit. Editing is what is what's the most non enjoyable part of uh, doing like a a review channel for the most part. Even though that we're not really reviews anymore, we're pretty much all live content. Um, minus Jeremy's um, um, budget challenge, which he has put on hold because of all the whole situation. And, um, yeah, uh, Jason's been getting into WoW Classic a lot lately. You know what? Um, I never got into WoW, but I was huge, a huge, huge fan of um, Warcraft 3. Warcraft 2 I was okay with. Well, Warcraft 3 was just fantastic, especially with the Frozen Throne expansion. Um, and I was so excited. And, Jason, you're probably right right there with me. Um, since If you play WoW, you just, you, I'm sure you, you, under, you know uh, with Blizzard and everything, they re um, they remastered the um, Warcraft three, and everyone was like up in arms at just like how poor a job they did, because what they orig originally um, had like shown at I think it was an E three or another kind another com um, was like read visualized graphics and everything like that, and um, um, just they kind of just messed. Met, they 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 fell very short, and so I play Heroes of the Storm. So when I launch up my Blizzard client, and up pops like the list of games you have the you know Diablo and Starcraft and Hearthstone and whatnot. Um, I see um, the Warcraft three, and it's just like I don't know. It's just it's a, it's very upsetting. Uh, because I I want to like replay it so badly, but I can't. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to justify pain for it. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Depends on how long this um this lasts, and um, you know how many old video games I get through. So I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I never really got into WoW. A lot of my friends were and um. Yeah, just never did, never, never really did. 
not for any particular reason. Just I don't know. Just never got me. I was I was much I was much more content playing uh, Warcraft three over and over and over again, and uh, like playing on Battle.net with all like you know the the um, castle fights and um, tower fights and everything like that. So, yeah. Uh, is anybody having? I know Greg's on dry week, so I'm assuming he's having some um, Canada Dry Bold or water or tea, probably, probably uh, Canada Dry Bold. Age of Empires. No, you know what? I was never a huge PC gamer. Um, Warcraft Two, Warcraft Three, Need for Speed Underground. Um, <laughs> here's one: Worms Armageddon. Worms Armageddon was one of my favorite stupid games that 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 uh, that me and my buds would play. We'd rent out, well, we'd rent, we'd sign out um, a study room in our uh, high school library, and we'd play LAN, um, LAN Worms, um, uh, Warcraft Three. Um, what other games? There was another uh, uh, Red Alert, Dune. I think was another one that we would play. Yeah, those were good times, high school. I always tell people that um, high school grades 11 and 12 more so. Grade 12 was my favorite year. Grade 11, it went in, in backwards order. Um, 12, 11, 10, and 9. But those were the my favorite school years um, that I would definitely go back and redo. Um, or I should not redo, relive them. Um, wouldn't do, well, maybe I would do elementary school again. Seven and eight were kind of fun. Cause then at that point, you know, you're kind of king, king shit in your elementary school. <laughs> um, and, um, that, that kind of like as a tiny Italian, I, although I grew up in, a, in an Italian centric neighborhood. So it wasn't like I was an outcast, but I was very tiny, um, and a bit of a, uh, dork. So I didn't really fit into anywhere. I was kind of like a free floating spirit. Um, but seven and eight were were fun. Um, then yeah, I wouldn't do a. I, I would read. I would redo university completely differently. But I would probably do seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, just about the same because um, I really did enjoy that period of my of uh, my schooling career. And with that, that is enough rambling because that's the. <laughs> No one's here to listen to me talk about my schooling career. Um, let's see. Uh, hey, Swami, what's going on? Good afternoon. Let's um, let's talk a little bit really quickly about what's coming um, tomorrow. So we haven't made the uh, link yet, but we're going to be doing uh, a sample night tomorrow. So we're uh, me, Brad, uh, and Dan, and potentially Jeremy if he's not working are going to be going through our samples, picking out some epics and drinking them, um, drinking them. And, um, we'll probably do that for the hour and then move on to the, to the after dark an hour after that. But yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow's probably going to, it's going to be an epic, uh, epic sample night. And we're trying hard to get a couple of people on the, on the channel. Um, some like industry people, and uh, just for like a good conversation and to kind of um, figure out what's going on. Any theme for the samples, Richard? Um, no, no, no theme. Just um, I think the only theme that we're probably gonna gonna try to adhere to are the harder to get bottles. Um, so like we do a lot of between between a couple of the people in in like in our community and, and mainly the guys that we had on when we did our cast strength. Uh, Canadian whiskeys episode, like the six, um, the six people there. Um, I think we were missing one person though. No, we were, it's the six. Um, we do a lot of bottle splits. So a lot of like crazy bottles, we'll do splits on like, I have a black adder, lechage, um, somewhere. Um, and like, a uh, what is it? A 15 year old, uh, Talisker, uh, single barrel, so like there's a lot of like really nice bottles in there. So we're probably just gonna stick to um 
the stick to the, the like the harder to get stuff. I say harder to get, harder to get in Ontario. So, <clears throat> Swami's not interested. All right. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Swami. <laughs> you know what? If uh, I'll 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 just start drinking the the Canadian the shitty Canadian club stuff. What do I mean by interesting, Greg? Um, like I said, like the like the rarer stuff, so like the either like a single barrel or like a rare cask of some sort. Um, like I have a Caden Heads Kalila 30, uh, 31 year old, um, a Caden Heads Royal, um, Royal Loch, Loch Nagar 19. So like some of the independents, um, some of the rare casks, where's that Lechig that I have? Uh, the Black Adder rare cask. It's a, it's a 17 year single hogshead cask at 58.3. So like stuff like that, just like stuff that's, um, you know, a little, might be a little bit harder to come by just, you know, like I said, like an, uh, you know, stuff that's a little bit, um, oh my God, the exposure. Ah, geez. The auto exposure on this camera sucks. Jesus, I gotta get that. I gotta get this fixed out. Ah! No Canadian Club Vietnam flashback. Bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know what, um, Richard? The Canadian Club usually comes out um, uh, at uh, during the after dark uh, stream, anyways. So there we go. There we go. That's better. Much better exposure. Um, yeah, so the most likely it will probably be no. Um, on the after dark this week, it's going to be Hiram Walker's special old rye whiskey. I got I got this bottle. I don't know why there's stuff missing from it, but that's going to have to get uh, taken care of. So just kind of going through all the shitty Canadian stuff that Brad and the boys got me. That's the after dark experience. And um, Greg has black velvet and Canadian hunter. I feel sorry for you, man. Why? 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 Why would you have that? Like, I have an excuse. I, I was unbeknownst to me. Um, these were forced upon me, I should say. Um, if you have Black Velvet and Canadian Hunter, I'm hoping that um, you're either uh, forced to buy them or just given them because that is... Um, oh, it's on budget. But do you enjoy them or you do, do you use them as a mixer? Now, here's the question. Because Canadian Hunter um, I had once, didn't like it. I'd probably rather have Canadian Mist than Canadian Hunter. But that's from very... like I'm struggling to remember the comparison. Black Velvet I've never had, and I probably I probably won't. Oh, maybe I will. Like, really, like, who am I, who am I kidding? Like, well, I'll probably end up having it. You enjoy them neat. Okay, well, good, good on, good on you, man. Um, uh, sipping some Compass Box Great King Street. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's a bottle that has eluded me. Insofar that every time I see it, there's always something beside it that is like, I'm going to grab this one. And I actually haven't gone to a liquor store and bought a bottle of whiskey in quite some time. Um, like the last two bottles of whiskey that I've bought and that I have purchased um, were online orders of the Lot 40 Cast Strength and the Alberta Premium um cast strength the last bottle that i actually purchased in a liquor store was for st patrick's day i bought a bottle of jameson castmates stout prior to that i can't even remember i can't remember 
it's all been either online orders from our secret uh, our our secret website or um, or samples that um, I went on splits. So yeah, Richard, uh, it's the non it's a no it's the NAS lot forty. Um, so the twenty eighteen version because they had the eleven year, the twelve year, and then the non HCM. So it's the third edition that I have. Um, it's damn tasty, damn, damn tasty. Um, that and the Alberta premium cast strength, like I, like, like I was saying on the stream when we were tasting both of them, um, last week. Yeah, it was last Thursday. Um, not Canadian whatsoever insofar as normally what you think of Canadian whiskey is, uh, the, um, the crown Royal, um, a base Alberta premium, all like the well was Canadian club, um, stuff like that. And, uh, this is the lot 40 and the Alberta premium cast strength are not that they are very complex whiskeys. They don't taste necessarily stereotypically Canadian, um, damn delicious. So if anyone can, can get a hold of them, I highly recommend it. Um, so, I mean, my beard's actually not itchy at all. Um, the only thing about it is that it is very untamed because I normally don't have um, the sides this long. Normally they're pretty shaved down, but because my barber is, um, you know, shut down essentially, um, it's very untamed. Same with my hair, but um, my hair, I might keep on growing. I might, I might try and pull a, pull a aqua vitae and like have like a, a nice do, nice classy do, but the beer's not itchy at all. Surprising, because I thought that it was going to end up getting itchy, but I, you know, you take the precautions. At, like you wash your hands every day, or like you know, multiple times a day if you go out, wash your beard, and uh, no itch. COVID playoff beard. <laughs> well, you know what? All the hair is COVID right now, and as long as the uh, lockdowns um, or even a partial lockdown continues. Um, this will keep on growing, going when my barber opens up, I'll probably be going, but for a trim, I'll probably keep on going, growing everything and seeing what happens. But, um, I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's very much playing by ear. Um, so, um, is this a knocked up bet? What are you talking about? Will someone pay your rent for your, if you don't shave? Oh, <laughs> I haven't watched Knocked Up in a long time, actually. That's uh, that went right over my head. Uh, no, it, it's it's strictly just um, just lazy. Um, one, I don't I don't touch my beard at all. Um, I leave it to my barber, uh, Chris, to take care of. He, I'm in good hands with him. Every time I go, he takes care of me. I go once every month, a month and a half, and um, I don't trust myself. I'm not um, I'm not careful enough here with a razor and stuff like that so i just leave it with him up here this is not a bet this is literally just laziness because razors are expensive and i really just don't want to be shaving my head every three days to literally see nobody so um this is just became just a laziness so samurai top knot. um i probably won't be doing a samurai top knot jason uh only because um uh, that's probably gonna be i'm we're gonna have to be under quarantine for a long, long time before my hair is long enough to do a samurai top knot. But if we are, then, you know, if we're on lockdown for another two years, then sure, I'll, I'll grow it long enough to do a samurai top knot just for you, Jason. Um, okay, Greg, yeah, it could be the Canadian Roy. Uh, the, the less eloquent, less uh, knowledgeable um, Canadian version of Roy. <laughs> For sure. Um, is it balding pain though, uh, Swami? Because, like, when I started to thin out, I had no issues whatsoever. Like, when it was like I wasn't as thin, like like it, I am now. Uh, three years ago when I started shaving, but I, when I noticed that I started going a little bit thin, I just said fuck it and started shaving. Luckily, I have a well-shaped head, so it's it 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 works out in my favor that I can you know I I don't look weird with a bald head, 
but um, I have no issues with it. Um, probably the thing that I have that I'm most sort of annoyed at is that I, I loved always changing up my hairstyle. Um, having a nice thick head of Italian hair really was nice, but um, stuff happens. I actually escaped um, pretty well because my father started balding when he was like 19. So when I hit, uh, when I hit 19 and 20, 21, 22, and I, and I still had a full head of hair, I was like, oh, this is beautiful. I, 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 um, like I've made it clear. This is, I'm on, I'm on the home stretch. I'm good. I'm not going to bald. And then like 24, 25, I started seeing a little bit less, uh, less hair over here. And so I kind of receding a little bit and then 25, 26, then when it hit 27, it was like, okay, well, you know what? That's it. You know, I, I made it out pretty well. I got another couple extra couple of years out of it, out of my hair. Let's just go all out and take it all off. So, um, it's okay. I'm fine with it. Um, so Jason, I miss having a hairstyle. Yes. I, that's like I said, that's what I miss too. I miss, um, there was a distinct, there was a distinguishing characteristic about you when you have a hair, like a, you know, a hair, a hairdo. Um, but, um, we have beards now. So this is a great, and I say all the time when people I haven't seen in a really, really long time, see me and they're like, Oh, you know, you, you, you shave your head now. This and that. I'm like, yeah, you know, really what, what it was gravity took over, took all the hair from up here and just put it on the lower half of my face. So I blame it on science. Um, Richard, I'm having Lagavulin 16 right now. Um, which is great because you, um, I've been having like beers and old fashions and Irish whiskeys, uh, predominantly on the happy hour. So going into something a little bit heftier, um, is a nice change of pace for the happy hour. Um, what's everyone else drinking? I asked that earlier, but no one really said anything. I don't think unless I missed it, I do apologize. Um, I would 89% give up my beard for hair again. Yeah. Yeah. I think I would too. I'm probably more 50, 50. Yeah. I probably, I probably put myself more 50, 50 on wanting, um, the hair versus my beard. So I don't know. I haven't been shaving like uh, obviously Jason. Jason has got a little bit more, a little more years on me with with the uh, with the with the Noah hair. But as of right now, as of like three years of pretty much shaving my my uh, my hair, I'm not I'm not upset about it. Um, Swami's drinking plantation rum. That's one thing that I've, I've been saying for a couple of weeks now is uh, what I want to get into. I want to get into rums like nice rums. And I actually reached out to someone um, in Ontario about like, what are some good rums to be drinking? And uh, they said nothing that's available at the LCBO, uh, which was, <laughs> which is fair, but like, I'm not a uh, rum expert. So it's like, give me like a nice sort of entry point into like nice rums. So Swami, so the SAQ and LCBO have fairly similar uh, selections for the most part. Um, so, um, if you can give me, um, a, um, like a recommendation of like, you know, like a relatively inexpensive bottle, kind of like wet my whistle a little bit, um, be really appreciated. Oh, you don't have to send me stuff. So I mean, it's, it's all good. Um, even if, you know, much appreciated, but if you just want to just send me a recommendation, um, that's more than enough. But if, if you so feel so inclined, um, do you, bro? Um, Jason's having water in Zevia Cola. Zevia, Stevia, Stevia. I assume that's what you're. Um, I've never heard of Zevia Cola. Stevia, I have. Um, is there anywhere else to buy whiskey in Ontario, Richard? Um, no, you have Ontario. 
Oh, top end of 12. Lovely. I like Tom, uh, Tomatin, I should say. St Stevie, yeah. I, so I, I assume, Jason, because um, you wrote Z-E-V-I-A, Cola. So Stevia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Tomatin's great. Um, the only Tomatin that I've had that I didn't like, and I not that I didn't even like it, I hated it. And we were talking about this uh, last um, last Thursday as well. There was a single cask release of Tomatin. I believe it was a 2001 bottling, if I'm not mistaken, um, that literally tasted like um, rotten, not rotten, but really bad aged uh, red wine vinegar and just nastiness. It was one of the worst bottles of whiskey I've ever taken part in. Um, but all the other tomatins that I've had have been stellar. So, oh, that's the brand. Oh, Zevia Cola is a brand. My apologies, Jason. All you Americans and your weird uh, cola brands uh, really, really throw me for loops every now and then. So, um, so Swami was say saying a great starter, Kirk and Sweeney 12 and El Dorado 15. All right, so let's. I'm gonna add that to my notepad of nonsense here. Kirk and Sweeney, twelve, and El Dorado, fifteen rum. So yeah, I'll um, I'll take a look at those Swami. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, Greg had some Kool Aid pickles yesterday. God damn it, Greg. Okay, now you have to tell us what Kool-Aid pickles are. Because I'm confused. Very confused. Um... Hey, Peter, what's going on, buddy? Wait for the four square 27... Oh my God. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys remember that application that was huge, like in like 2009, 2010, 2011 called Foursquare, where it was like a Yelp sort of deal that was connected to like Twitter and Facebook and you'd get points, um, like social points for checking into restaurants and stuff like that. Um, but uh, that's the first thing I thought of when uh, Peter White said four square 20, 2007 cast strength rum. Um, but I've seen four square a couple times on labels and it's, it's catching my attention. So uh, let's add that to it's coming out in a couple of months. Now, Peter, is that going to be coming out in Ontario or just in Canada? And are we going to have to use our back channels to acquire a bottle of that? Because if it is good, then it's going to be overpriced in Ontario. Um, but if there's, if it's going to be available in Canada, then it might be available a bit cheaper. But um, also, um, uh, Marty Neary, that is a new name. Welcome in, buddy. Uh, la la la. Four Square has been called the Pappy Van Winkle of Rum. Interesting. So 75 US is probably going to run us about $170, $180 in Ontario if it's being brought in by the LCBO. Now, that is that's uh, that is a very sort of slapstick um, price that I put on there, like it's just a stereotypical markup that the LCBO does. We've been we've been um, sort of lucky with some bottlings being a little bit cheaper, like the Weller 107 was 40 bucks here, which was phenomenal. 
um, and some other sort of uh, spirits being a little bit cheaper. But for the most part, there's always a crazy markup. So, um, and at fifty nine percent, there's probably going to be there's probably going to be a fairly big markup, uh, Peter. So, um, fingers crossed that it, that there, that it isn't. But I guess we'll see when uh, when that goes down. Um, Marty's from Denver. Cheers, buddy. Cheers from uh, from from Colorado. I want to go to Colorado. Are you? I assume. Well, I assume. Are are you a um, are you a Broncos fan, Marty? Um. So this is turning into a bit of a rum discussion, which is great. Plantation single cast collection. So many collection. Yes, Broncos. Um, I'm excited to see what Drew Locke has um, has to show the league, um, given that they have a, an amazing dual running back um, team there with uh, with Melvin Gordon and um, uh, and Lindsey. Your, the receiving corpse is is uh, is solid. Um, who's the tight end there now? I forget. Didn't they bring in? Um, did they bring in uh, um, Graham? I think they brought in um, what's his name? Gosh damn it! Forget the, the tight end. I think his last name is Graham. Um, let's see. I'm I'm, ex I'm excited to watch the Broncos this year. If the NFL even happens, I'm kind of fingers crossed that it does because it's really the only sport that I love paying attention to. Um, but you know, can't be picky. Uh, la 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 la. Let's uh, Kool Aid pickles is adding Kool Aid by sprinkling some on top of each. Bite or after you add the powder to the jar and mixing it in with a brine. Okay. What um Greg, what do you um what do you use? Like which which flavor of Kool-Aid? Purp the purple stuff? Or the red stuff? Mm. Or the orange stuff. What other colors of uh, Kool-Aid are there? You got red, purple, orange. Is there green Kool-Aid? I assume so. I haven't had Kool-Aid in forever. I don't know why. Yeah, I got to go shopping Friday, so maybe I'll pick up some Kool-Aid just for shits. Black Cherry. Oh, my God, these crazy flavors now. Guadalamala XO. It's all right, but the Belize is still my favorite. I assume we're still talking on rum. <laughs> Which is, which is good because I need to expand my rum, my rum knowledge. Yep, we are still still on rum. So, so yeah, um, I don't know, guys. Um, I'm almost done Community on Netflix, and I know there's a bunch of of um, of um, recommendations that y'all kind of gave me. Um, like Brad said, Midnight Gospel. A couple of people said um, I should I should uh, get around to Firefly, Peaky Blinders. Um, is there anything kind of crazy you guys have been watching on Netflix, Crave, uh, Prime that uh, is worth watching? I know I gotta I gotta go th get through the fifth fourth season of Expanse. Um, so that's definitely um, on the horizon because. Yeah, I'm just about finished season five of Community, so I'll be able to probably polish it off in the next day or two. Smoking Aces, um, the movie, right? I love that movie. Great movie. But then again, like I, almost anything that um, um, oh fuck, what's his name? Why am I going blank so much today?
Uh, I'm gonna go crazy when I when he's uh, Jeremy Piven. God damn it! Anything? Um, yeah, everybody was in it, but more more so Jeremy Piven. Um, I love Jeremy Piven. One of my favorite actors, um, not just because of his portrayal of Ari Gold, but I just, I just, I just, I just like him. He's just a cool dude, and I like the way he acts. Uh, the, a lot of the characters that he ends up uh, playing and portraying are always fun to watch so um yeah peter that's um i'm gonna put that on because you know what that's a good movie to re that's that's a worthy movie to rewatch. peaky blinders has his own whiskey really which whiskey obviously obviously i haven't seen it but um is it called a Peaky Blinders whiskey? Forgive my um, my ignorance there. Swami, so, you don't have to lie to us, man. We like you don't have to um, project onto your wife. If you like, if you like floppies, you like floppies. It's all good, bud. It's twenty twenty. No judgment. You do you, bro. Oh, it's Irish. Peaky Blind is Irish. Okay. The first I've heard of it. Or maybe the first that I've actually uh, paid attention enough to notice that someone might have said that. Um, we can get it at the LCBO. Interesting. I'll have to take a look. I probably won't buy it, truthfully, but worth, uh, worth, the, worth the checkout at least. Ah, Whiskey Jason. One day we are, we'll get back to reviews. Maybe. Probably not. I don't know. Who knows what uh, what the future holds for, um, for cast strength. I'm surprised that we're even still doing this almost two years later. It's like... I would love to be able to go back and see the conversations that me, Brad, and uh, Josh had, and, and Gretchen, Josh's wife had, when we were thinking up the idea of this, and just like, like, oh yeah, you know, we're well, this will be good for like a month or two, and whatever, whatever, and now here we are, like almost two years later, doing nonsense like this is. Uh, like this is some sort of game. Imitation game, Finding Forrester, Smoke Signals. Yeah, Richard, enjoy hanging out too. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think after Community, I have to do a couple of movies. Oh, also, uh, I keep I don't know why I keep on forgetting to mention this. Started I started watching the. Uh, the last dance series on Netflix on uh, the 96, 97 Bulls team and not being a huge basketball fan. I've been to three games live. I've fallen asleep in two of them. Um, I don't mind watching like the last like two, three minutes of a basketball game. Cause that's really the most exciting part, especially if it's a close game. I just think that it's, I, for the longest time, I guess my lack of appreciation for it, it was always just like, well, the, you're scoring every like 10, 15 seconds. Uh, it, like it's, it gets monotonous is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's why I don't really like tennis either. I don't know if you guys heard that, but someone, some badass is revving their engine. Um, but um, yeah, it was just, it was always kind of boring to me. And so actually watching um, the last dance and seeing the clips and um, the mentality of Michael Jordan and the rest of the profic proficiency of that team um, kind of opened my eyes a little bit on just um, how intricate the game can be. And um, yeah, it's, it's been, it, I've, I, we, me and my roommate just finished uh, the second episode we're probably going to watch episode three tomorrow night. 
probably. And or no, probably not tomorrow night because we have I'm streaming tomorrow night, Friday, Friday, Friday night. But yeah, um, definitely great. And he's a huge basketball fan, and he's in love with the series as well. So if you're a, if you are a basketball fan and haven't watched it, definitely watch it. If you're not a basketball fan, but you want to sort of maybe obviously there's a lot of time now for a lot of us. If you want to kind of indulge yourself a little bit and um, sort of entertain uh, watching it and sort of honestly, my eyes were open a little bit on the intricacies and just how fun it can be to watch. Um, now, again, there aren't many players like Michael Jordan, um, um, Scottie Pippen in the league uh, in like nowadays, right? You got LeBron still. Yes. Um, but you know, like it's just, it's a bit of a, it's, there's a, a little bit of a difference, but um, definitely watch it. Polar bear. <laughs> Swami, you're more North than me. So I don't, <laughs> if, if there's going to be a polar bear rummaging through uh, my trash, anyone's trash is going to be your trash <laughs> in toronto it's going to be a raccoon if anything <laughs> fucking raccoons we have a raccoon problem in in the city uh but god damn it curling uh greg female curling and no i'm not being sexist or anything like that i enjoy women's curling uh, much more than most other competitions. Um, I, just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know why. I'll leave it up to you guys to decide why I enjoy watching women's curling more than uh, men's curling, but curling's fun. I want, I've, wa I've wanted to get into, into curling, actually. I have a friend of mine that um, was in a league a couple years ago and I was telling her that, oh yeah, you know, like get me in, get me in, get me in, but she wouldn't do it. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I need to get into some sort of sports league eventually if, and that's even if they uh, exist after the lockdown ends, which I hope they do, but who knows when that's going to happen. Um, oh, Swami said Ozark. Yes. And that's another one that I ha definitely have to get into. Uh, it's on my queue, on my queue, in my queue. Um, but that's definitely one that I definitely have to, because yeah, like, like you said, uh, season three was great. Uh, I've heard so many good things. So yeah, definitely going to have to. Oh, Richard, you are an Irishman. Were you born there? Were you born in Ireland? And yeah, curling is like darts on ice. Curling is like bocce on ice. And I think I was talking about this last week in one of the streams. Darts, dart competitions, guys, and if there's any uh, ladies watching. If you want to watch the craziest crowd you've ever witnessed, watch a, cur uh, a dart throwing uh, tournament. I have never seen a crowd go more batshit crazy um, than I have when I've watched a dart tournament. It, um, it was eye opening to say the least. Uh, they're lunatics, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it definitely, definitely makes it much more entertaining of a competition to watch. And, um, yeah, shuffleboard on ice. That's another way of, of, of curling. Uh, Richard was from Northern Ireland. Still love the place. Bushmills is where my folks live. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. That's one place that I definitely need to, I missed out on the last time I was in Europe. Um, but, uh, when all this is said and done, like I said, it's going to be my, my plan of attack is British Columbia. I'm going to go to, I'm going to visit BC and then most likely the States, uh, most, Nine and a half, ninety-five percent is going to be Texas, um, and then uh, then Europe. That's the, and then then most likely Japan again. Um, 
and Europe is probably just going to be very, very, we're going to spend a majority of time in Ireland and Scotland. And I want to do a bit of time, a couple of days in Budapest, uh, Vienna, Prague, um, and maybe Venice as well. Do like three days in each of those. And then like five days and three, four days in Scotland, four days in, 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 uh, Ireland, I think might, I might be able to swing. So that end up, ends up being about 18, 19 days. I think if my math is right, I think that's enough time. So the last dance isn't available in the U S really. Okay. So it's an ESPN documentary, if I'm not mistaken. So if you have Disney plus, I feel like you should be able to get it. But it's available on Netflix in Canada. And that's weird that we have something that you guys don't. So I'd be curious to know to, to see if there's other avenues, Greg, that you can uh, utilize to watch it. He uses VPN, yeah. I'm not tech savvy enough to, to, to work a VPN. All right, guys, give me one second. I'm just going to close my window because it is getting a touch chilly, even though it is um, sunny outside. Excuse my midsection. Ugh. Oh, okay. So he, Greg set up, uh, set it up so he can watch it. Cool. Uh, Peter here is the American sports. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's talking about it. Like even all the, on the podcasts I listen to, um, they're every Monday, Tuesday, they're always talking about, um, about the last dance and Yeah, I'm the fantasy the fantasy football league that I'm in uh, with a bunch of my uh, a bunch of my boys. They um, they were talking about it before it was even released, and um, it kind of got me thinking that you know it's something that I should watch. And like I said, luckily for me, um, well, not luckily because I probably would have ended up watching it anyways, but I definitely sped up a little bit the fact that my roommate is a big basketball fan. So, um, so yeah, but I'm happy that I did start watching because it is, um, it, it, it kind of puts in perspective exactly what Michael Jordan meant to the sport. Um, obviously, you know, when he was playing, I was, um, I was, I was born in 89. So, um, his last season with Chicago was, 2006 2007 right so i would have been seven eight um no it would have been eight um and um uh, definitely not watching sports uh that's one thing that i was not um into as a young as a young kid i was not into watching sports um on tv i played sports i played uh basketball uh, baseball i played soccer uh, but I wasn't a big fan of watching sports. So <clears throat> when I could have been watching it and uh, watching basketball and watching Jordan play, I was playing uh, I was playing video games. I was playing Super Mario. I was playing Legend of Zelda, uh, Mario Kart, and all that stuff. So, um, you know, now now I get to go back and 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 watch it and kind of gain a little bit of a, of a better appreciation as a – you know, as a, as a five, six, seven, eight year old, you're watching it and you're getting more excited, um, probably more so um, because of well, when your parents or, you know, um, excitement about it and not so much about, you know, your understanding of the sport. Grind, mind you, if you're really into it, um, like my little cousin was huge into hockey when he was six and he knew more than 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 I did at six years old. So. Uh, but yeah, definitely, that's definitely worth it. Um, and uh, yeah, that was a nice little ramble there. Oh, I don't know about you guys. My being stuck inside is uh, starting to get a little bit uh, tough on the body. But 
you know, you got to do what you got to do. And, um, and yeah, let's see what's going on here. Nothing's going on there. So that's good. Uh, so it's five o'clock. I don't know. Maybe we'll go on for a little bit longer. Got a little bit more Lagavulin in the glass. Um, I might pull out my uh, my Infinity Bottle really quickly as my next pour. And this is my uh, one of my favorite bo uh, bottles, the uh, Hibiki Bottle. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. This is my um, my Infinity Bottle of choice. So I'm probably gonna. I I, I kind of want to deplete it a little bit. Well, deplete it and um, drink through it, rinse out the bottle, and restart a um, like a proper Infinity bottle. Because this was made, fuck how how um, how long was into whiskey? This was this blend was made when um, I was probably still eight months seven, eight months into drinking whiskey. Um, and I wonder if I could find the, the video, the stream that we did, that me, Josh, and Brad did um, for our for this, for the Infinity Bottles. Because Brad made one, I made one, and Josh made one. I'll see if I can find it and maybe re-upload it, because it would be kind of funny. Oh, Richard, uh, an, an Infinity Bottle. So essentially what, um, basically... An infinity bottle is um, a bit of all the whiskeys that you have. So uh, you can put any whiskeys that you want in it. It's a bit essentially is a blend of the whiskeys that you have. A lot of people um, like what I did with mine is I put, if I'm remembering correctly, I put two ounces of everything in my collection that was unpeated and one ounce of everything that was peated in my collection. So that's what I did. Now, a lot of people don't do it that way. What they do is they work to make a blend. So they'll typically start with a little bit more of a base whiskey um, and something easy, friendly. So what I've seen a lot of people do is use like one of the base, like uh, base big ones. So like Glenfiddich 12, um, even um, uh, like a Belvini or something something readily available and then they add to it uh, based on their, what they want to build. So a lot of people actually separate it. So they'll do like a bourbon infinity bottle, a smoky infinity bottle, um, depending on your preferences. If you don't like smoky, then obviously you're not going to make a smoky infinity bottle. But if you're a bourbon guy, make a bourbon infinity bottle. If you're a scotch guy, um, but a lot, a lot of people try to stay centralized in the categories, but sometimes you can deviate. Obviously I deviated. And when we made this, when I made this one, um, it it wasn't good for a long time, um, and I kept on just like saying it's gonna age well, it's gonna like oxidize and whatever, whatever, whatever. And it did actually get better the longer it um, it stayed. And this was full, like I did a full bottle, so I've been steadily drinking it over the past probably about a year and a half or so, and um, it's just get, get, gotten progressively better and more round versus as spiky as it is because what ended up happening was the the peated stuff actually ended up taking over and at the time i didn't have very much peated i was uh even though i enjoyed peated whiskey i wasn't um i definitely had more of the highland and space sides in my collection than i did peated whiskeys so what ended up happening was the peat took over and it made it threw everything off balance um, and for the longest time, it was very spiky, very, uh, very harsh, um, still drinkable, but definitely not what I had initially intended to. Um, when I finished this, uh, this lag of wool and I'm going to pour a little bit of that and let you know what it ended up being. And if I can, like I said, Richard, I'll see if I can find the, um, the video of how we built each of our individual ones. Um, and this was, again, this was before we even had this channel, this was prior to that, this, um, even like three or four months before we decided that we were going to do, uh, like, a this channel. So very, um, very, uh, um, 
rough, not so rough, just like unstructured, uh, free flowy, kind of just crazy, uh, crazy fun. I'll see if I can find it and then um, let you, uh, I'll uh, let you know um, anything. If you have any questions, definitely let, let us know. Um, Steve, what can't even walk around the neighborhood in Kanakistan? We can, we can. I'm catching up on some, on some, um, on some, um, um, comments here, guys. Give me a second. So, uh, Richard onto the Jura 18. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I've only ever had the blended Jura. So like the superstition, um, or whatever the other three are called, I forget, but, um, I haven't heard anything bad about Jura and I don't, and I don't mind at all the, uh, the blends that they, that they do. So I assure, I assume that the 18 is probably just lovely. Steve, uh, we can, we can, we can walk around here. Peter's infinity bottles of rock kills farm bottle. Very nice. Very nice. Mm. What I will say is that the Lagavulin 16 is not, isn't the best at oxidizing. I say that it's becoming a little bit weirdly muted and spiky. It's not as round and classed as it once was. So I think this might actually end up being um, the next bottle that I'm targeting to bottle down. There's not too much left. Uh, well, actually, there's about a third or so of a bottle. But that can be easily remedied. Maybe I'll do some... Uh, I'm not even going to suggest any sort of like weird produced ideas. Um, because I won't get around to them for a long time. And by then, by the time I get around to making produced content, this bottle is going to be empty. And I was like, oh, well, I promised I'll like a Olin 16... Um, produce video and I don't have any song just gonna step back I'll think of something to to do um experiment wise for this that I can do like live I think once I get the island situated in the in the kitchen I can do some stuff out there uh but we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see oh email uh uh pittsburgh steelers exclusive access to game tickets i don't even know if there's going to be a, a if the board is going to be open so like as much as it pains me i'm not going to be i'm probably not going to be buying tickets for the steelers this year which is upsetting because i've gone the last six years in a row has it been six years five or six years for sure okay i'm gonna count them so Steelers, Baltimore, wild card. Uh, Steelers, Broncos. Steelers, Pats. Steelers, Seattle. Steelers, Atlanta. Yeah, it's five years. Yeah, five years. Hmm. Oh, and Green Bay. Sorry, and Green Bay. So six six years. Jeez. That's right. That Green Bay game was beginning of, beginning of December, and we were in like one of the top at the far end, the closed end of the of the of the stadium. So all the wind was coming in. It was so cold at night. It was a Sunday night game, freezing, and I don't do well in the cold. So that was just absolute torture for me. But what a game. What a final drive by Pittsburgh that that game. Absolutely fantastic. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do, uh, Richard, if you're still watching, gonna get a, a different, um, a clean glass. And actually drink some water. And uh, get into this uh, my infinity bottle. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, shut up, Greg. I'm talking about the in season, not the Super Bowl. Um, it was uh, three seasons ago. Um, three seasons ago, and it was a Sunday night game. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a, the Super Bowl. And yes, they didn't have a lead in the Super Bowl. And you know what? That was a Super Bowl that, um, at the end of the Super Bowl, uh, I, what was that? It was Super Bowl forty two? I think, or forty four. Fuck, can't remember. I think it was forty four. Um, that after the Steelers lost that Super Bowl was when I decided that I was going to be a Steelers fan. Um, not even a Steelers fan, a football fan. And people always say, will tell me, oh, you know, oh, you're a Steelers fan. Oh, you're a bandwagoner, blah, 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 blah. I knew nothing about football. Um, the only reason I watched the Super Bowl for like the three or four years before that was because me and my buddies would make a fucking feast of food, wings, pizza, dips, beer. Like we, we did it more for the food than the actual Super Bowl. There was only two of my friends that actually watched it out of the seven that ended up watching it. <clears throat> and uh, um, so that year that the Steelers lost to those Packers, uh, my buddy Adam, who is a big Steelers fan, after they lost, he was over in a corner, kind of like to himself, just kind of like upset. And I was like, you know, what, bud, everyone else is kind of happy and everything like that. You're here sad. I'm going to be a Steelers fan with you so that you're not the only one kind of like, you know, um, grieving for for uh, lack of a better term, and uh, since then I've been a Steelers fan. So I, not knowing anything, I, having just seen them lose a Super Bowl, I was like, I'll be a Steelers fan, sure. So it's literally not bandwagon. It was I stumbled upon being a Steelers fan, and that's that's the story. So don't ever call me a bandwagoner. And even in Toronto, when the Jays are doing good. Or um, the Raptors, because the Raptors won the NBA championship, uh, whatever it was, two years ago. I refuse to bandwagon. I've never been a fan of Toronto sports teams. I'm not going to become a uh, become a fan just because they want to. Um, they're doing good, or they want a uh, you know a, a championship. I'm not a huge fan, so I'm not going to be a huge fan. I'm not going to bandwagon. There's so many bandwagoners out there, and I, I despise them. I really don't like bandwagoners, so I. I'm just not going to be one. All right, so Richard, this uh, Infinity Bottle. So the the harsh peat that normally you find, and there's a lot of Octomore. There's, I think there's there's one Octomore, uh, two Taliskers, two Ardbegs, um, Fire and Cane, Abuna Habin. Um, a Lagavulin. In here. In addition to everything like that. So, like, the peat's very varied. But what was very prevalent at first was um, the Octomore. Um, very harsh, rough peat. And because, I guess, the oils and everything didn't mingle in right away together, the um, the it was peat and then nothing underneath it and then sweetness. So the peat was very forward, very spiky, very not enjoyable. And still being a peat head, I, I didn't find any enjoyment out of it. It was still drinkable, but it was very rough. And then it just became very subtly um, rounder over time. So now the peat's not um, phenolic in any way. It's more like a, like uh, damp, um, damp ashes and all the sweetness from the Highlands, uh, Highland whiskey and uh, the Irishes that I had have kind of come up filled and have a lot more robustness um, under that very thin veil of a sort of damp smoke. It's kind of like it's kind of like um, like a uh, a smoky buttermilk fried 
ness to this, which is very weird to say and very weird to think about. But the sweetness and like the the there's a bit of sour there as well. Um, kind of makes me think of fry like southern fried chicken a little bit. It's very rich. And extremely fruity on the taste. It's it um, it flips itself. So there's not as much peat. There's oil. There's an, a very distinct oiliness to to the taste that you typically think of um, peated whiskeys. But you don't really taste any, if at all, smoke. Like very bright fruits, very strange. And I think that's coming from um, the Glendronic 12, the monkey shoulder, like said, all, all like the Highland sherry finish stuff that I put into this has finally kind of like brought itself up. Yeah, it's actually turned out very, very, um, very simply complex and by that i sort of mean like they're simple um notes but very distinct notes that you normally might not find um as prominent um in the glass as you typically would Like I said, um, I think Josh threw his away, and I said to myself, "I'm just gonna let it, let it do its thing, let it uh, mingle, give it time." I was in, I was in, I wasn't really in a in a rush, even though that, like it, it was, it was okay. It was still whiskey that I paid for, so I'm gonna drink it. But I'm glad that I didn't drink it as quickly as I could have. I let it sit and do its thing. It's become very, very nice. And that's probably one of the things that I would suggest anybody that wants to get into not just blending in general, like in a glass where you take two or three whiskeys and, you know, you put an ounce of this, half ounce of that, like a dash of another one and try to kind of create something new is the patience that you have to have. So a lot of times you get a whiskey right away that just works right away. And for me, that that blend was the um, the Octomore, no, Octomore, my apologies, the um, Talisker 10 and Lafroy Quarter Cask blend worked immediately. Didn't have to let it sit. It just worked from the get-go. But when you're doing like three, four, five, et cetera, plus whiskeys um, in a bottle or an infinity, you want to really give it the time to just marry together really well. The same way that blend uh, master distillers will, that when they're making a blend, they're letting the, like the, the barrel sit for more than a couple of days, typically. Um, weeks or months or years to really marry together and create something special. So that's one thing that I would probably say is, is if it doesn't work out right away, give it some time, let it mingle and marry together and then evaluate it and add, um, add whiskey if need be to kind of make it a little bit more um, to preference. But if you fill up an entire bottle uh, like I had and um, don't really have room to add, then let it sit. Because you never know. This actually ended up being really, really good. So um, let's see. Uh, Steve said Pete can be amazing. I mean, uh, Pete, uh, Steve, give me give me a peated whiskey that is um, 
less than par that you would actually turn away? I'm curious because I don't know if there is one that I would turn away. There's a lot of good peated whiskeys. There's whiskeys that I've had that um, are peated that I not necessarily I, I that not that I wouldn't drink them again. I wouldn't buy a bottle, but there's I would hundred percent drink again. Um, but curious. Uh, Peter said my infinity bottles all sherry matured or finished cast strength added in. Uh, Lame rig and devil's cask as the only peated scotches turn out excellent. Yeah. And that's the thing when you're dealing with the peated whiskey, uh, peated whiskey blended with Highland stuff or other sort of delicately matured stuff, you gotta be very careful. Um, like I said, I got really lucky. I put in some volatile, um, peat into that blend and it took n- some near a well over a year and a half, probably clo- almost close to two years now to really, form up so um yeah it's uh it's it's tricky and that's why a lot of people typically separate the peated stuff from other um additives of their infinity bottles just because it can be very volatile it can take over very easily so gotta be very very careful if you want immediate results or if you want to just take the risk um this was a risky thing that i did i kind of knew that it was going to be kind of weird um, I didn't know that it was going to take this really th- as long as it did to kind of round out a Mary, but it is what it is. No, no, see what I'm saying is you said can be. So what, uh, my, my question was what whiskey is less than stellar? What Peter whiskey is less than stellar? And I understand that not every whiskey is great. It is a sherry finished whiskey is great. 100% agree. Uh, but I'm just looking for um, sort of an example because I haven't found one that's not worth revisiting. And I'm not too sure if, if we're both speaking the same language there. Um, but what I'm interpreting can be amazing is that you're saying that there are ones that aren't. So what are the ones that aren't uh, aren't worth re- revisiting. Uh, Richard doesn't know too much about Pete. I remember cutting it as a lad in Northern Ireland, throwing it on the fire, but not on my whiskey. Man, that's amazing. Oh, I'm so jealous. No, nah, so jealous. Uh, you you cut Pete and use it as fire, as, as logs, essentially. That's awesome. That's, um, that's old school, man. That's fucking amazing. Um... Yeah, that's that's really really cool. I'm sure probably at the time you weren't thrilled about it. Uh, maybe maybe not. I don't know. But I feel like that's something that, um, uh, that like as as a young as a young uh, kid you might not be. Oh, I have to go out and cut peat. Blah blah. blah. I don't know. Uh, Macier Bay, Lafroy, Ten Arbic, Tag. All three are good, but Stellar is a high bar to hit. Dark Hole. That fair enough. However. Okay, I understand what you're saying. You're talking about good and great. And I I understand where you're you're creating the separation. Um, whereas I think Greg was just saying that all generally all around, Pete adds so much more um, to whiskey for those that like the f- profile of that. Um, but I, I, I agree. There are the different levels of, um, of quality of, um, of whiskey. Now, the thing is that you're talking about dark cove. That's not just a peated whiskey. That is a, uh, especially the, the committee release, um, a, a cast strength. Um, and I'm almost positive. That's a, that's a sherry matured, uh, art big as well. There are outliers, um, to that, there are qualifiers because you're comparing something that's strictly ex bourbon, um, like a Lafroy 10. I believe Ardbeck 10 is solely ex bourbon as well, to something that's at a hot, much higher proof and additionally matured. Um, so there is a bit of a qualifier that I would contest 
that, but you are correct in saying that the the expression itself is much more than the base. So I will give you that, but I would say that there are qualifiers because at that point, you're not really comparing apples to apples. Um, so much are as like an apple to like, like a uh, granny Smith to a, um, um, uh, whatever the fuck another, uh, a Macintosh apple, let's just say. Right. But I, 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 I have to agree with you. There are, there are the different levels. So yes, I, I do agree with you, uh, Steve. Uh, Richard thrilled, not at all. Uh, <laughs> fucked up with my uncle. He was a Presbyterian minister. Love him to this day. Superb. Guy. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Peter McKellen's Isla, I am sure sucks. Okay. Okay. So here, here's the thing. Um, McClellan's Isla is a three-year-old Bemore. Essentially, that, uh, as far as what I've been able to dig up, McClellan's Isla is a three-year-old Bemore. It is okay. That was my first actual bottle purchase. Um, I intended to buy it as a gift for someone, but then ended up rethinking it and being like, ah, I'm just going to keep it. And I got them something else. Um, and I started to, tr I tried to drink it neat. I wasn't a huge fan. I drank it with Coke and gin, like um, that and Coke, that and ginger ale. Um, to this day, I, I, that's one that I definitely wouldn't rebuy. Only because it was missing so much complexity. And that sort of continues on with my opinion of Bemore as a whole. I'm not a huge fan of Bemore. Um, they're 12 year old. I'm not big on um, the 15, not huge on a couple of other kind of separate expressions, not big on the 18 year old. On the other hand is fantastic. I love the 15, uh, the 18 year old Bemore. It's, it's wonderful, but it, I believe, I think Bemore needs that age it needs to be aged more for that spirit to really shine. So a three-year-old version of it doesn't do the distillery very much justice, in my opinion. So I don't want to. I kind of don't want to include that when we're when we're kind of talking about um, bad peated whiskey and not bad, even though that really you should. But I, I kind of don't want to just because. Um, it's not a Bemore bottling. It is a blend essentially from, um, another company. And I don't know. It's kind of weird. I know I should, probably should be including it, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt and just kind of like excluding it from sort of the content, uh, contest that we're kind of not even contest, the discussion that we're having. I'll include, um, distillery the distillery uh, expression the distillery release expressions only when discussing that blends or independent bottlings i'm going to kind of leave out when sort of when we discuss um stuff like this uh because i think it's much more fair to the distilleries themselves because the distillery is in charge of the release um and blending of it versus if they um if a if another company or bottler uh goes in um, they pick from a bunch of barrels that Bamore gives, but then after that, it's kind of free, free, free range, like do what you will. Um, and that's why McClellan's doesn't even have Bamore on the bottle. Like, it's just like McClellan's, I love, that's what it is, blah, blah, blah. Do a bit of digging. It is a Bamore, essentially a Bamore three. So, um, I would rather judge the distillery, uh, based more on their ability to uh, produce and blend something versus um, a second party fiddling around with um, the spirits. When as, and this is one discussing like you know what we're talking about the you know peat good peat whiskeys. So because essentially those other those other companies aren't peating, aren't distilling. They're essentially just blending. So not to discredit them, but um, I think it's a different discussion. Uh, so Steve says he wouldn't replace the Mac Bay or probably ever get the full bottle of Freud 10, Arbic 10. 
will always like okay so uh the mac here bay steve uh remember that um the one you're probably drinking uh is probably one from a couple years ago before they started adding in older whiskeys to it right so kilholman is still relatively young and the last i spoke with the distillery owner was that they intended to continuously add in older um, barrels into uh, the Macier Bay, the Seneg, the uh, Loch Norm, um, increasing its complexity and the Tuar effect of uh, what older spirits will add to it. So um, I'm essentially holding out a little bit more for the base version of the Kilholman um, because the older it gets, the better it is. Like the, the Kilholman STR that I have, I believe the oldest spirit in there, I think is 13 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So it's like a bunch, like between eight and 13, if I'm not mistaken. And God, it, it is one of the best whiskeys I've had um, out of like a, essentially like almost a core range. I, I think they're tr going to try making it a core range thing. Um, and I would say that the Kilholman STR is and I even said I think I said this in my review of it is as good or better than the Lagavulin 16. Um, so that just makes me more excited for what the older casks are going to um give to the core range bottling uh NAS bottlings that Killman offers. So um yeah, exactly. That's what that's what I I'm just gonna kind of sit on it and wait and um as it continually gets older and I'm going to hunt out bottles that were bottled, you know, in 2019, 2020, um, so that I get a bit more of maturity in that blend. So, uh, Richard has a question. If you could have any whiskey right now that you've never had, what would I go for? Oh, that's a really a hard question i've been very privileged um to know and have friends that are able to obtain whiskeys that i normally wouldn't be able to so for the most part i've had a lot of whiskey that i normally wouldn't have been able to have having said that I don't know. That's a really hard question because out of the, out of the core range or limited releases that distilleries do, um, okay. Peter says Broad 2014 and Port Ellen. I, I can't even, I can't even fathom trying to pick out something like that. Um, uh, off of memory, what I would probably say, as an as a as a vague blanketed answer, hey Nathan, what's going on? Is that I would want to try? I would want to I would want to try more independent bottlings. I've been increasingly more impressed with, uh, um, like Black Adder, um. Caden heads, North Star spirits, um, being able to pick out the right casks and and do what they do with it and bottle them. Which one specifically? I don't know if I could pick. Um, I do have a, a bottle of Black Adder coming at me, um, hopefully in the next week or so, and I'll uh, I'll do that on like a stream of some sort or um, even like maybe I'll do a produce video on it. But um, uh, anything from an independent bottler from a distillery that I really enjoy. So the, the black adder that I purchased last night was a black adder third. I believe yeah, black adder 13 year old, Buna Habin Moin raw cask. So I love Buna Habin. 
Their Moin expressions are unbelievable. And Black Adder has just done amazing things as a, as a bottler. And I particularly like how they always have uh, a fair bit of the, of the, um, of the cask remnants in the bottle. So if you've never seen it, so this is the, the 17 year old, uh, raw cask black adder. And if you, let me get uh, some, uh, you can see the, uh, the cask remnants in there, uh, fairly well. Right. So that's all just like cask remnant in there. Um, I, I really like that. Uh, it's different. It's interesting. Um, and you're constantly getting a little bit of that sort of like cask influence. So um, I would say, like I said, that's my answer. An independent bottler, bot uh, bottling company that's bottling from a distillery that I really, really like it from an, from a specific sort of range um, that I particularly enjoy. I've stopped trying to take as many chances outside of my budget that I normally, that I probably would have a, a year or two ago. Um, so I'm sticking to stuff that I know that most likely there's a great, a better than not chance that I'm going to love it. So I love Buna Haben. The Moyne expressions that I've had from them, from, from them have been unbelievable. And it's slightly older than their core, their core expression at 12 years. And it's an independent cask, uh, sorry, a single cask. So, um, it checks off enough boxes for me to be like, that's, that's something that I would enjoy. Um, so that's my answer. It has to check a couple of boxes for me. Um, but, um, it's not an, it's a non-answer, but that's, what I'm gonna have to answer with Peter, a uh, uh, Richard. Uh, so just because, I, like I said, I've been so privileged and uh, to be able to have an unreal amount of of whiskey and whiskey that I'll probably never have again in my life. Um, so I to go more independent. Um, that's that's where I, I uh, just independent bottlers. So. Steve got to crack a Port Allen 32 last summer. Oh, ah, that's, I actually haven't had a Port Allen yet. Um, definitely that's okay. Richard, you want an answer? Port Allen 32. I'm almost positive. I, I was, I feel like the Port Allen 32 was not at the bachelor's ball. Um, so I'm going to, I'll just give you a Port Ellen, just any Port Ellen. That's the bottle that, that I, that I've never had that I wish that I would go for. Um, Richard, if you've never had a Buna yet, uh, I highly recommend it. Um, the, I love the Buna Haben 12 is, uh, one of my favorite whiskeys. And that's the whiskey that I actually recommend to a lot of bourbon drinkers or anyone that wants to transition into peated scotches because it's so lightly peated. I know it says it's unpeated. I've done, I've done enough digging that there is enough peat in there that it can't be considered not peated. Don't fight me on this. I had a big, a big argument about this and I, I went in, into the depths of, 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 depths of archives there is a bit of peat the peat is the barley slightly peated slightly slightly like to almost an undescript uh, un um distinguishable um factor but it is still peated um and um you get a little bit of that peat a lot of x sherry still with a heavy bourbon influence and uh it is wonderful and for me, the first time I had it, the first thing I thought of was a smoky caramel, um, a smoky, a, a, a smoky salty caramel French vanilla ice cream. It was to die for. Greg, don't fight me. Um, 
and it was it's still phenomenal. I regret that I don't have a bottle on the shelf always, uh, but it's te- it. I wonder how much it is at the LCBO now. But I remember it being, I think, around eighty ninety dollars, um, if I'm remembering correctly. And yeah, Steve, it's two to three ppm. Yes, but it is still a peated scotch. So, uh, Buna Haben. Uh, da, 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 da. The LCBO app stinks. Nathan, don't fight me on this, please. Buna. Uh, let's see. Puna Hobbin 12 at the LCBO. $90 now. Yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough swallow, uh, for me right now, just because I did drop 200 on that, uh, that black, uh, black adder. Um, but the Buna Hobbin 12 is damn good. And if you were ever, uh, $50, so yeah, $50 US is going to be, Probably about seventy-five, eighty dollars Canadian, so right about there. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, if you are ever lucky enough to find a Moin, a Buna Haben Moin, whether it you won't find the Oloroso for sure because that's long gone. That's one of the best whiskeys I've ever tasted. But um, there's Moin Bardot uh, and a whole bunch of other ones. Moin is just peat. And then you have the wine finish. Um, so it's um, if you ever find a Buna Haben Moin, even at a bar, highly recommend you try it. It's well worth it. Um, and um, yeah, definitely Buna Haben is one of my favorite distilleries. Definitely my top three. Maybe Okay, my top four. Because the core range is good, but I like... I like Ardbeg's core range a little bit more. I like Lafroy's a bit more, and I like Buna Hobbins a little bit more. Uh, Brooklady's a little bit more, but the the Moines do stand out far and away as one of the best bottlings, in my opinion, from Isla. Um, and yeah, so. So, damn yeah, that um, the um, my Infinity bottle really is really good. It really did come together. And um, the last time I had it was a couple of weeks ago. It was not like this at all. So even three weeks, two or three weeks between tastes, it's changed for the better. I'm actually kind of afraid to keep it airing because. I can't imagine it getting better than this. This is the best it's been. Mm. I just kind of belched a little bit. And a lot of... I got that salty smokeness that came up a little bit, which is really nice. Yeah, it is really nice. All right, guys. Uh, okay, so I'm going to call it a day just because i do have to drive my car back to uh my my grandmother's place and then i have a 30 minute walk and i want to do that while the sun's still out uh however um if you guys haven't already hit the little bell button um for our live streams and our happy hours um tomorrow night we're doing an uh an an epic sample night me brad and dan for sure jeremy uh potentially i believe he's available but he might be working but we'll be doing um, our our just samples for an hour, just crazy samples, um, and um, yeah. And then obviously uh, we'll be going, we'll be partake, participating in the Rock Gut stream immediately after our stream, and our stream starts at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So then it's us. Then at nine it's uh, Rock Gut, and then again at ten o'clock back here for the After Dark stream um where i will be drinking shitty canadian whiskey and uh shenanigans will ensue 
uh, Nathan and tell Grandma I beg beg her to make me some uh, tortellinia broba. No, only for me, only for me, and it was only because I was um, I'm uh, I was named uh, for my nono. So uh, this is actually his uh, signature on my arm. I don't know if you guys can see it. I got the the signature there of when he landed in Canada um, on my arm, uh, Vito Galliardi. So, so yeah, anyways, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for indulging me. I managed to do an hour and 40 minutes alone. This is becoming a little bit easier. It's probably still rough. I apologize, but um, I think Wednesdays, I'm just going to take care of it myself. And then Mondays and Fridays, a uh, bookend the solo stream with, with uh, people from the chat. So, uh, see you guys Friday. No, wait, see you guys tomorrow night. And uh, if I don't see you tomorrow night, Friday afternoon. Cheers, stay safe, and uh, drink responsibly, guys. Cheers. <laughs>